Welcome back. I'm Falonir, and this is my Learn to Learn Board 2 series, where I teach you how to use basic things inside Learn Board 2. If you like this content, don't forget to like and subscribe, and check out the playlist for the other videos that I have for this series. In the last video, we talked about variables. In this one, we're going to go a little bit more in depth on the different kinds of variables and how to use the variable viewfinder, which you can get to from the main menu or from the inside any button in any deck uh, if you are updated to the newest version of Learn Board 2. Let's switch over and we'll get into it. All right, so let's go into Learn to Learn Board 2 and I have a special little button down here that I've created. We've already enabled it, but the button ID is called test var and that's important. So we're going to use that information. And down here at the bottom, we have our variable viewer. So if we click this, we will see all of the different buttons that we have in all of our decks with their names. Most of them are ID random number generated by Leon Board um, and others have individual specific names that I've chosen for those buttons. Um, it's important for you to name your button so it's a lot easier to search through this. But if we do the search bar down here, we can do test underscore var. And here is the button that we were looking at just a second ago. So if we open this up, we will see five different kinds of variables. Uh, we have variable one here, which is green. This means that the thing that's inside that variable is a number. So it's the number 100. Variable two and three are blue. That means they're a string. So 100 in a string in the quotes, and then Charlie uh, turns these blue. These are strings. We have shopping list prices. This is an object. Uh, this is very new to Leon Board 2. Leon Board 1 did not have objects and I've got uh, a full video I'll be posting to explain how objects work. And then we have an array, which in Leon Board 1 was called stacks, and I'll have a video for that one as well. And then var 4 is undefined, and I'll explain what undefined is here in just a moment. But very quickly, let's go over the different kinds. Um, so we all know what the regular variables are. Um, you've used these in Leon Board 1. You will be using these in Leon Board 2. Uh, the blue ones, the strings are just collections of letters and numbers. Sometimes they make words or phrases. Sometimes they're just strings of, of random characters. Um, but when we're green, we're holding just natural values. Uh, this is really good when we can make comparisons for if this number is lower than this number. We want to be using these values and not numbers hidden inside strings. We can't really make comparisons with numbers inside strings. Uh, so you would have to use a command that converts it from a string to just a number. I can go over that in a later video if somebody wants me to. But we can see all of our variables from here. If we click the little eyeball, it'll show us what's hidden inside these things. So let's look at the array first. It tells us how many are there. And inside of it, we have milk, eggs, bread, beef. <laughs> I've been clicking this button a lot. So it says milk, eggs, bread, beef, like four times. Um, but those are all the things inside this array. And of course, you can remove anything in here you don't want super duper easily and individually, just like that. So now I have four items in this array and it's just individual things. So you can think of an array like a shopping list. It just holds items in it, individual things. Um, the string can be numbers, it can be letters, it can be phrases, but it's only holding one thing at a time in order. If we look into our object, which is purple, think of this like a shopping list with prices. So where arrays hold individual things, objects hold pairs of things. So if we look into it, we can see that beef is $7.99 a pound, depending on where you are. Uh, bread is the string, you know, also $3.99. Eggs, I have no idea how much eggs cost. I don't need eggs. Uh, and the milk is $3.99. So if you want to hold collections of information, pairs of things, and you want to track that, you can use objects. If you just want to hold a list of information, you can use arrays. And you'll see here variable four undefined. Let's go and look at the button that created these and get a better look at how we um, got these different things. So we'll hit done, learn to learn board two, and we'll go into this button. Now to start off, we have variables. Variable one equals number. This is really simple. It's just holding this value and we can do things to it. We can increase it, decrease it, change it to something else. If we wanted to change it to a string, it's fine. Uh, variable two is holding the string 100. Variable three is holding the string Charlie. Now, if I did a, another variable, let's do variable seven because I have uh, set local. Uh, I have a couple variables going up here. If I tell it 
to do Charlie without quotes, it's going to think that Charlie is another variable. So in our yellow boxes, and I didn't explain this in the last video, if we start with a letter, the box is going to think that this is a variable. So it's going to try to figure out what Charlie is. It's not going to see anything because we don't have a variable called Charlie and it's going to return undefined. If I wanted to pull the information from variable one, I would put variable one here and variable seven would then hold the information that's held within variable one. So that's why we use strings here. And if you ever try to create a message using a variable, if you don't wrap it, it's going to throw you an error inside the array. The first thing we need to do is create the array and then we can insert things into it. So we created an array called shopping list and then we inserted in the top position the string milk. And we did the same thing for all of these. If you wanted them in a different position, you would change this to top, bottom, or number. The bottom position is zero, and then the next position is one, and the next position is two, and the next position is three. So if we did insert array, and I did in position one, I want this to say uh, new array item. When we trigger this button in position one, it's going to add new array item to that um, to position number one, and we'll see it in the list. We'll trigger it when we're done. For objects, we would need to first create the object. Then we use the set object variable to create our pairs. So the first key is milk, and we assign a value, which is going to be the string 399. And this follows the same premise. If you want it to be a phrase or a word, uh, then you would use the quotes to make it a string. Otherwise, you can make it a number or you can make it the variable being held somewhere else. If you need more information on variables, make sure to check out the last video where I go in depth on how to call different variables, whether it's global, local or deck. But we would just make milk, eggs, bread and beef and we would assign information to pair with it. And then down here, you notice that variable four said undefined. When you're making a variable, if you're setting it to another variable that hasn't been created somewhere, hasn't been defined yet, it's going to give you a return of undefined. That means it doesn't know what that variable is. So make sure that when you're spelling your variables out, you're spelling them correctly if you're referencing them somewhere else. But in addition to that, I have here variable six plus five. Now variable six doesn't exist. So it's going to return undefined. And that's because, well, that's because it doesn't exist. So in order for me to increase variable six by five, I have to make variable six something first. I would have to set it to zero or 10 or some other number to then be able to increase it or decrease it by some value. So whenever you're making variables that you want to change their value in different parts of your commands or over time, uh, you want to make sure you set it to something first. It can be the number zero. Uh, and for those of you that use Leon Board 1, this is going to make sense to you in Leon Board 1 because in that program, your variables were defaulted to zero if you were trying to increase them without setting them first. It would, it would think that the value is zero and then it would increase it by five. So then it would have been number five, but that's how these variables work. So try to take this information and then you can open your variable window here, test underscore var, and then boom, we can see all of this. Now, if we go back, click this button again, one more time, let's pull up our stream deck. Click right here, go back into our viewfinder. We have test underscore VAR. Open this up. We'll notice that var six is undefined five. Uh, it just added five onto the end of the string undefined. But in our shopping list, we put it in position number one. So milk at the very top is position zero and then one and then two and then three and then four and it went down from. So if you want it to be at the very top, you can hit top or zero and then one, two, three, four, so on and so forth. And if you want to be at the very bottom of the list, you just tell it to be bottom. I hope that helps you learn a little bit more about variables, how to use them, define them, and then be able to search them and see what they are. So if you have something reading undefined or incorrect somewhere, then you can go back and look at it and see what your variables are holding and how they're being held. Hope you found this video informational. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Check me out on Twitch. I stream three days a week. If you like this video, click up here and see the next one we have in the series. Otherwise, have a great day. We'll see you in the next video.